Today's gospel reading comes out of the 13th chapter of John, verses 1 to 12. And in today's gospel reading, John the Baptist is not the main character, but rather Jesus is the main character of today's gospel reading. It was John the Baptist who was entrusted by Jesus Christ to prepare the way of the Lord. But John the Baptist had one challenge. His message sometimes wasn't being heard for two very important reasons, and that's evidence in the fourth verse of the 13th chapter of Matthew. Let's take a look at what it says. It says, John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was grasshoppers and wild honey, so it continued. You see, John the Baptist realized that wearing these clothes and eating this food, people just thought he was eccentric. People thought that John the Baptist, the way he carried himself, it, it just you couldn't pay attention to the man. But John the Baptist realized he was being judged by his externals. No one here wants to be judged by their externals. No one here wants to be judged by how you dress and by what you speak. That turns out to be the key point of today's gospel message. Not only of today's gospel, the second Sunday of Advent, the message of Christmas, and well beyond. We don't like to be judged by other people. How many people here like to be judged negatively? Raise your hand if you do. I didn't think anyone would raise their hand. How many people like to be judged by the way they speak? Raise your hand. I didn't think anyone would raise their hand. As much as we don't like to be judged by others, we give ourselves license to judge other people. You might sit back and say, I think it's wrong for people to judge me. I'm upset that this guy judged me, he judged me. But then you sit back and you judge others. You see, we have to try to find a way to, to do less judgment and be happier with what we say and how we act. And there's one very important gift that we can give to each other. And it's a gift that doesn't cost any money. But if you can employ, employ this one attribute, it means so much in a circle of family, in a circle of friends, and in your community. This really should be the gift that we should give to people. Let's take a look. The benefit of the doubt. You know what that means? How nice it is to give people latitude. If you're over at Giant Eagle and you're shopping and you're pushing your cart and you're ready to make a right-hand turn to go down the next aisle and you see someone that you know 20 feet away from you and before you go down that next aisle, you wave. They're looking right at you and you wave, but they don't wave back. And then you go down the aisle and you feel yourself seething inside. You say to yourself, they looked right at me. I waved. They didn't wave back. I'm never going to wave at that person again. Now you're upset and now you're angry. But what you should have done is say to yourself, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure I was in their line of vision. I'm positive they looked at me, but why didn't they see me? Physically, they're in Giant Eagle. Mentally, they could be somewhere else. They can be dealing with the illness of a wife or a husband or a child. Maybe someone they love just has passed away. Then they're buying groceries for the company that's come to their house as they offer sympathy for that person they just lost. Yeah, they looked. They did not see. Giving someone the benefit of the doubt allows you not to judge, to replace judgment with compassion. Misunderstood anger with understanding. Prejudice with prayer. If you just say to yourself, I'm not going to judge someone by their external appearance. I'm not going to judge someone by the way they speak. I'm not going to judge someone by what they eat. I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt. We're going to watch a little video. And then in this video, we're going to see something that's true for everyone here tonight. Everyone here tonight is dealing with some type of issue. And I'm sure if someone judged you tonight, you would look at that person in your heart and it would be breaking. You'd say to yourself, but you don't know what I'm going through. Let's take a look at this video. If we could see inside other people's hearts a profound microcosm of life in four minutes, could a greater miracle take place than for us to look through each other's eyes for an instant? Henry David Thoreau. has been dreading this appointment, fears he waited too long. Wife's surgery went well, going home to rest. Day 29, waiting for a new heart.
19-year-old son on life support. Doesn't completely understand. Too shocked to comprehend treatment options. Waiting three hours. Husband is terminally ill. Visiting dad for the last time. Celebrating 25th wedding anniversary. Wife had stroke, worried how he will take care of her. Recently divorced. Just found out he's going to be a dad. Daughter is getting married on Saturday, determined to be there. Worried how he will pay for this. Tomorrow, first vacation in years. Seven thousand miles from home. Nearing the end of a twelve hour shift. Seven years cancer free. Hoping to hold her today. saw something on her mammogram. Just signed DNR. Always wanted a child of her own. Ears all better, finally. Car accident six months ago. Pain won't go away. Tumor was benign. Tumor was malignant. If you could stand in someone else's shoes, hear what they hear. What they see. Feel what they feel. Would you treat them differently? In the gospel reading, John the Baptist, judged by his external appearance, by the way he spoke, made a lot of people not listen to what he had to say. What was he really looking for from people? He was just looking for the benefit of the doubt. A little slack, a little bit of latitude. Everyone here tonight is going through something. Many people have already gone through loss. It's the Christmas season. And loss of a loved one is amplified when we get to Christmas. You relive in your life all those people you loved and lost. They just become a part of the Christmas season. You can smell their presence despite the fact they've been gone for many years. At Christmas time, we're going through so many things and everyone here, whatever it might be. Your heart might be heavy tonight. But in that video, there were those who had spurts of joy. Cancer, B9. The fellow behind him in the escalator. Malignant. Maybe a gift we could give someone is not to judge as quickly to give the gift of latitude. To give the gift of the benefit of the doubt. Just think about what that would do to you. And for you and for your family. 
It is so easy to get upset and angry when you wave at someone, they don't wave at you. You're walking towards someone, they're coming right towards you, and you look and you say hi, and they don't respond. I'll never say hi to that person again. Now you're seething inside, you're angry, and you're upset maybe forever at that person. But maybe what you didn't know is they just buried their son today. And they look, but they didn't see you. Yeah, they, they saw you in their pupil, the retina, the vision of you was, was in their head, but they didn't actually see you. They were so close to you, but their mind is a thousand miles away. It's broke. You're trying to figure out how to get through the day. And the only reason they get through the day is because their heart continues to beat and God didn't call them home. You want to give someone a gift this Christmas? You want to make yourself happier, you yourself happier this Christmas? Judge less. Love more. Give people the benefit of the doubt, which is latitude. Allow them the opportunity not to see you. If you're down a giant eagle again and you're ready to make your cart go to the right and go down the next aisle and you see someone, you know, 25 feet away and you wave, they're looking right at you, but they don't wave back and you wave harder and they don't wave back, go down the aisle, not angry. Say to yourself, God, they're, they're going through something. I don't know what it is, but the heart is heavy tonight. So instead of being angry at them, I'm going to go down the aisle, get my next item, and as I do it, I'm going to say a prayer for them. Because I know this, had they seen me, they would have waved. They looked, but they didn't wave. That means they didn't see me. Because their mind, their heart, their eyes are somewhere else. The video ends with a very powerful group of questions. If you could put your feet in someone else's shoes, hear what they hear. See what they see. Feel what they feel. Would you treat them differently? The answer is an emphatic yes. Have you ever gotten mad at someone because they haven't responded to you? Have you ever had a conversation with that person and say, why didn't you say hi? And if they told you what was going on in their life, a tear would roll down your eye, dry was coming across your cheek, and you'd probably say, I'm sorry, I judged you wrong. I thought you were being ignorant, but you were hurting. I was the one being ignorant. The benefit of the doubt, for it is true. If you were to put your feet in someone else's shoes and hear what they hear, see what they hear, feel what they feel, and know what's going on in their life, would you treat them differently? The answer is yes. You judge less, you'd be happier more, and we'll all be better off for it. The gift that you want to give someone else, it's free. It's a challenge, but it means so much. Because when people give it to me, it feels so good. It's the benefit of the doubt.